I'm sure you've seen this overview in your Google Ads account before, the Google Ads so-called recommendations. And there are many people who claim they are very important and you need to have 100%. There are many people who say that this is absolute garbage and you shouldn't even pay any sort of attention to it. In this video, I will explain to you what the recommendations really are, how to use them, which of them might actually be useful and which you might just ignore just like that. So let's not lose any time and jump right into it. What you can see here is the dashboard, the, the Google Ads uh, recommendations dashboard of one of my clients. And I purposefully picked this particular client because we have a bunch of um, recommendations going on and they're all not sensitive. It's all not sensitive data that we see here. So it's actually a really, really good fit. The recommendations are basically different points that Google says you should implement in your account for better performance or how Google often calls it account hygiene. So Google has something internally that they call account hygiene. So if you have very little errors, if you uh, make sure that the campaigns can spend their budget properly and many, many other things like auto bidding, then according to Google, you have a high account hygiene and that's what they're going for. Then you see that there is a big score here at the left, on the left, and you have many different areas where Google tells you to improve certain things. And these are the things I wanna to talk to you here in this video. So the most important thing when it comes to Google Ads recommendations is that you shouldn't just blindly listen to them. I think that's pretty straightforward. At the same time though, you shouldn't ignore them either because every now and then there are some really, really useful points that you can learn from the recommendations. And I personally use them as a sort of reminder most of the time, right? So I manage accounts and especially when they grow in size, Sometimes you, you lose sight for certain things. When you have like dozens of campaigns, thousands of keywords, etc., it makes sense to revisit the recommendations every now and then to get an idea of some details that you may not have on your radar. In this case here, we see that there are some top recommendations like upgrade to a Google Analytics 4 property. Well, with that particular client, we are using GA4, but we are completely you know, connected to um, Universal Analytics with our Google Ads. And all the things that you see here we have a good reason to have them the way they are, right? So enhanced conversion, there are some details in our account about that. Upload customer match lists, same here. And then the other things you see as well. So each of these different changes has a, a score attached to it. So in this case, if we upload a customer match list, which you can, which is like a custom audience on, on Facebook where you can upload it, then you can build similar audiences from it, right? Pretty powerful tool in some cases. Um, if we implement that, we get 8.1%, meaning our score would ju jump up to 85.4% uh, in that case. And then you can look at the others as well, right? There's many technical stuff. There are many technical things, set up enhanced conversions, upload customer list, fix your Google tag issues. And here's the thing. If your business is, is a good fit for it, you know, uh, in terms of how you collect data, in terms of how, in terms of GDPR, in terms of, you know, you want to use these things, then by all means implement all of them. But as you can see, there are also other recommendations, like for example, bit more efficiently with target ROAS. Don't get me wrong. I'm a big fan of target ROAS. I'm, I believe, and I know from experience now from millions and millions in ad spend that in the long run, target ROAS team tends to be the most effective bidding strategy of all, right? If you have conversions, if you spend money, if you see results, then target ROAS is usually the best. However, in that particular case, it's for a campaign where we purposefully use manual CPC, right? Most of the campaigns I use in this account are running on target ROAS, but there is an exception and that's exactly what this recommendation is for. And it's also just a relatively small amount with 1.4%, right? If you have many campaigns that are not running on target ROAS or there are many cases where you should like upgrade to broad match, use target ROAS, etc., then this number tends to be higher. We have also other things like, for example, expand your reach with Google search partners. That's something that I like the search partners. Uh, typically, I have them turned on. But as in this uh, account right here, they're just not performing for us, right? So our CPA is very high when they, when it, when people come from the search partner network, it's much, much better from like Google owned from, from the Google network. So these all of these points, when you check them out, you want to double check and make sure that they are actually like positive for your business, right? You want to check, okay, 
Google partners, have I tried them before? Yes, I did, work terrible. Okay, in this case, I will not use it. You may even go ahead and say, okay, I wanna dismiss that particular recommendation. Um, other cases, like for example, target more products with Performance Max. We have a Performance Max campaign dedicated to certain products and that works very well. We tried the other way around before with that account, didn't work that well. So there is a purpose behind that. And you see that this is true for all the recommendations. You want to make sure you want to make sure um, whether it is a mistake that you don't have these things and you need to be reminded of it, or whether there is a purpose behind not using those. Um, what I want to make very clear is that in fact, oftentimes they do make sense, right? So don't just refer to them as like some Google nonsense and they're trying to to get your money. Um, that's not the case. Like it usually does make sense to 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 look at these things, but you shouldn't just do it blindly, as I now said several times, right? Oftentimes they will tell you things like use broad match, bid higher, set higher budgets, move budget from A to B, um, and then you have to think about whether this makes sense in your context. I can tell you my sort of routine for it, if you like, right? Like. Every week or so, depending on the account size, depending on whether it's early on or whether I've been managing that client for two years, right? I'm checking the recommendations to see if there's anything new and important that I might have missed. So sometimes they'll tell you there are conflicting negative keywords, right? Like let's say you have a search campaign, you have 30 keywords in there, and then you have applied a negative keyword list, not knowing that uh, this negative keyword list has a few negatives that are that are listed as positive keywords in that campaign, okay? So you are blocking your own traffic that way. And without Google notifying you via this uh, system, you would probably never really notice because let's say you have a negative keyword list with 2000 negatives, which we have on a regular basis, and then you have like 30 positives. You are not checking all these 2000 negatives, right? Maybe there is just one little mistake. You have one word where you didn't think properly about the combination of words or something, uh, one phrase where you didn't think about the combination of words and now it's blocking 20, 30, 40% of your traffic. It doesn't happen often, but it might happen. And then this comes in very, very handy. Or sometimes they tell you to use um, add extensions. Let's say they notify you, hey, you haven't used any Sitelinks extensions and sure, Using all the available extensions that there are is a no-brainer because you're getting higher CTR, you're getting better relevance for your ads. So in these scenarios, it's very useful when they remind you to add assets, when they remind you to remove things that are conflicting, when they remind you that uh, maybe a well-performing campaign could use a higher budget. Sure, then you can think about whether you want to do that. But these things tend to be no-brainers and they make a lot of sense. And it is great as a reminder. Other things, as I just mentioned, going with target ROAS if you don't want to or if there is a reason not to do that, changing budgets from one campaign to another if the other one might not be performing that well, or you know, going with broad match when you have a very specific product and you need some level of control, right? I'm a big broad match fan, but sometimes it's just not the right, uh, the right match type, then you have to think critically. So it's actually a very straightforward topic. I want to keep this video very, very short and to the point, but that's how you use the, um, the recommendations. Keep in mind that this score here is kind of arbitrary, right? Sometimes I have client that, clients that come to me, oh, uh, our recommendation score dropped or optimization score dropped by 20%. What ha what's, ha what's happening, right? Well, it's, you know, it's a secondary metric at best. First, of course, you have ROAS and sales. Then you have things like, you know, quality score, CTR, C CPC. Then in my opinion, you have things like the optimization score, which sometimes makes sense to keep high. If it's very low, like five to 10%, chances are something might actually be wrong with your account or your campaigns or something needs attention. But as long as it's in a decent range, you know, 30, 60, 50%, um, you have to really double check if there is an issue with it or if it's just things like that, that in our case just don't really make sense in that particular way. So I hope that this short little video was helpful for you. If you want to learn more about Google Ads, using it for e-commerce, scaling your campaigns and optimizing them, check the two links in the description. The first is my training, my Google Ads training ready for 2022, where we talk about all the topics that you need to know about shopping, search, PMAX, how to scale campaigns when they seem unscalable, how to make sales beyond your brand search terms and so on and so forth. 
And the second link is working with me directly. So you can tell me a bit more about your business, what you need, what you're doing, and I can check whether I can help you scale it up just as I do with many, many other e-commerce clients. So thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments if you have used the optimization, um, the optimization score before, if you pay attention to it. And with that being said, I look forward to see you in the next video again. Bye-bye.